You know, guys, something tells me when our journey is done as MMA journalists, we'll look back on July 11, 2015, <laughs> UFC 189, as one of those special nights, a night that stood out among the many UFC events that we've had the privilege of covering. Hello again, everyone. I'm Ariel Hawani. Post-fight here at UFC 189. We just wrapped up the post-fight press conference. Conor McGregor walked away with his new UFC interim featherweight champion. I think I speak for both Mark Ramundi and Sean al -Shadi. We're still trying to digest what we saw here tonight. It was a tale of two cards. First half of the night, not that exciting, not that memorable. Second half, may be the most memorable in UFC history. We throw that out a lot. We need some time to figure it out. The bottom line is something special to happen here in Las Vegas. And let's start with the newest member of the Irish family, Mark Ramundi, who has turned the corner here tonight. You said yesterday that the UFC made a mistake by booking Conor McGregor versus Chad Mendez. What about that mistake? It turned out to be the greatest gamble in UFC history, in combat sports history, perhaps. Yeah, it was a gamble, and, and man, did it pay off. Dana White is a big blackjack player, and he said, hit me, and it ended up being 21 tonight because uh, Conor McGregor beat Chad Mendez. Now this big Jose Aldo versus Conor McGregor fight that's going to be next is going to be possibly the biggest fight in UFC history. So a little comeuppance for me uh, for, for picking Mendez and, and telling everyone to go bet on him yesterday during the preview show. Here I am wearing uh, the orange, white, and green of Ireland. So... This is my comeuppance. Sorry, Ireland. So Sean Alshadi over here is one of the best writers in MMA, one of the best sports writers. You have a way with words. You're able to paint beautiful pictures. So I will put you on the spot here. How do you describe what we saw here tonight, in particular in the main event? Man, my head is still swimming. We are maybe like an hour and a half after the event. I still can't really process what, what I just saw. That was easily the greatest main card I've ever seen. I think maybe the greatest main card in UFC history. The, last, the run of the last six fights kept building and building and building. All the production elements, Sinead O'Connor and whoever the stained guy was. It was Aaron Lewis. <laughs> I, whatever. <laughs> it, it was just it was one, the single greatest spectacle that I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, I can't really articulate how incredible it was just to be able to experience that. Being in that arena in that atmosphere around all those Irish fans. That was just one of the, the most memorable ex experiences that I've ever had in this business and I will never ever forget this night. Are you emotional right now? No, I'm not emotional. It's just like I'm, I'm struggling to articulate words for what we just saw. That was literally just insane. Like I, I don't know, it was just really crazy. Like it was just really, really crazy to, to put it in layman's terms. Like again, that was the greatest main, main card in the history of the right. UFC. And it sets up what I believe will be, by the time it comes, if you give Conor McGregor a belt and you give him several months to, uh, to hype that, I believe that's going to be the biggest fight in UFC history. You know, the first thing that came to mind when Conor won the fight was, what will they say now? What will the naysayers say about him, right? He finally fought the wrestler. He beat the wrestler. He was taken down. He was cut open, took some big shots. What is there to say about Conor McGregor at this point? Negative. Is there anything? Oh, there's, there's still stuff to say. I'm what not, can you say? I'm not saying I agree with any of it, but I still think there's stuff to say. I, I've already seen on Twitter, well, Chad Mendes didn't have a full right. training camp. That's and, true. you know, he, he ran out of gas in the second round. Uh, if he had a full training camp, maybe he wouldn't have run out of gas. But to counter that, I would say that Conor McGregor only had two weeks to prepare for a wrestler in Chad Mendes. So I think, I think all things being equal. You know, I think that part of, part of Chad Mendes gassing in that fight was owed to Conor McGregor, as he explained to the press conference, going to the body and, and kicking him to the body and, and punching him to the body. And I think that helped suck the wind out of, out of Chad Mendes as well. So I wouldn't say it's only because of the training camp. Listen, you have to, you, there's no way you cannot give Conor McGregor credit after tonight. He answered the question. He is, without a doubt, the biggest draw in the UFC right now. And, uh, you know, he's, he's as good as advertised. He's as good as he says he is. There's, not, there's no other way to say it. And you know what's interesting, Sean, about this two-round fight? All the judges scored the first round for Chad. I didn't yeah. see anyone online score it for Connor. And then essentially 95% of the second round was all Chad as well. Last 30 seconds or so, Connor got up, poured it on, and of course he finished him with just seconds remaining. So here you have a fight in which Connor was dominated. Yeah. He had his moments, let's not forget about that. But yet he comes out smelling like roses because he withstood the 
the pressure from Chad Mendez, the takedowns, the ground and pound, all that stuff. He took, he didn't run away. He was cutting him off. He brought the fight to him. It's a weird thing, right? He lost the, the first round and was about to lose the second, and yet it looks like an amazing performance. And he called it. And he, he called it. He second round. He 100% called it. Yeah. The 3.5 million bet, like, he, second round. I, this guy's level of prediction ability is so unfathomable. Mystic Mac. It's unfathomable at this point. And, you know, we were, I was sitting on press row, and it was crazy because I've never seen a fight like this where after every single exchange they had, they were talking to each other. They were each talking mm. to each other after every exchange. Chad Mendes would hit him with something, and Conor would just be like, you're a midget. Uh -huh. And just throw it right back. And his, it, it's like, what? Like, I don't know. It was, again, it was just so, it was so remarkable. And it was such a crazy way to finish what was such a memorable night. I don't know, man. Again, I'm speechless. Like, that was, the, that was a coronation. Uh, that was a two-year, really, travel to this coronation. And it exceeded anything that we even thought it could be. Yeah, two years for us. But let's be honest, there are some people yeah. who have been following him for many years and hearing him say these things, that he's going to become a UFC champion, to see him wear that belt, it was very cool to see how emotional he got, went down to his knees with the flag, and, and this is a guy who has been very brash, and he's outspoken, yet to see that emotion was very memorable as well. What did you think in the early portions of the fight when he's, you know, as, as Sean said, standing there, talking trash, but yet his hands are down, he's begging almost Chad to hit him. I mean... It felt like he was playing with fire. It almost felt like if he lost this fight, it was on him more so than what Chad would have done to him, if you get what I'm saying. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was worrisome, I think, if you're a McGregor fan, because this is, this is not Dennis Seaver. You yeah. know, this is not Dennis, Dennis Seaver. It's not even Dustin Poirier, who's obviously very good as well. This is Chad Mendes, who, as McGregor even admitted in the press conference, is probably the second biggest hitter in the, in the division outside of McGregor and the best wrestler in the division. So this is a legitimate, legitimate opponent, and he's almost doing what you know Anderson Silva did to the Damian Mayas of the world with the way he was talking and what he was doing. But you know what? I, a part of me was like, you know, I think, I think he's got this. And, and I, 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 like, I just, his, the, it, the power of persuasion with him, you know, the, the laws of attraction, his, his ability, his self-belief is incredible. And, and I really believe, I think that he, everything that he says he believes truly, and I believe that his actions are, are you know, are, 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 are a vehicle for what he says and what he believes. And, and I think that there's something to be said for that, and, and, and he did it. You know, he, he did it again, and I think that he, he wins the mental battle over everyone, and he won the mental battle and the physical battle over Chad Mendez tonight. Sean, Brock Lesnar had the WWE fan base. Chuck Liddell had years of promotion and the look. You know, um, most, most recently we had GSP who had years of buildup and a whole country behind him as well, but it took some time. It took some time with Anderson Silva. With Connor, it's been two and a half years in the UFC, and he was a star before this event, but of course now he's a megastar. Why do you believe people are so attracted to this guy? Why is a featherweight doing what he is doing? I mean, it's, it's everything, right? It's the whole package. It's the ability to, again, call your own shot on a different level than guys who will just go out and talk some trash. Like, call your own shot in such a nuanced level that you're able to uh, really just, like, self-create whatever this belief that you, like, like he just said, the self-belief is incredible. Like, to be able to, to manifest your own reality onto someone else is incredible. I, I really can't think of anybody else in, you know, MMA history who's really able to, to generate that level of, uh, again, manifestation of their own reality and project it onto their opponent or just onto, you know, their future or onto anything. Also, we're, we're skipping over, like, what a chin on that guy, man. Like, yeah. he was taking gigantic shots from Chad Mendes throughout those two rounds and shrugging it off and laughing, and it's just good old time. It, yeah. it, I don't know, again, it's just crazy. That, to me, was the biggest revelation of the night, the chin that he had, because he's never been tested like that before. And now we have this massive fight with Jose Aldo on the horizon. They spent months building it up, and they had to take a break, and now it's even bigger. And that's why it was worth the gamble, in my opinion. I know you disagree, but that's a moot point at this point. Is that fight too big for the MGM? They made a lot of money here. They made over $7 million, but is it Cowboy Stadium? Is it something in Brazil? Is it something in Ireland? Should they explore those options, or do you come back here? I think you have to, and I think that after seeing just what weigh-ins were on Friday, just by seeing that, I was thinking to myself, man, if this were, if this were Aldo versus McGregor, where are they going to fit all these people? Because there weren't even there wasn't even a big uh, you know Brazilian 
congregation here for, for, for this fight. If it were if it were Aldo versus uh, if it was Aldo versus McGregor, there would have been thousands of Brazilians here too. So you're talking about another few thousand people added to the people who are already here, and 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 that whole group of people. It's I don't I don't know I don't I don't think the MGM Grand is is big is big enough. I think that they'll obviously set another gate record if they were to do that. But could they do a stadium? I mean, it's it's certainly possible if you, if you combine them with you know Ronda Rousey. Why not do Texas you know Cowboy Stadium in Texas? Why not? Do you think that can do over 1.7 million pay-per-view buys? It's a tough question because, and we were talking about it before, I would say that Aldo versus McGregor now will be the biggest fight in UFC history. However, the UFC 100 card that did that huge pay-per-view buy rate number had Brock Lesnar versus Frank Mir, which I think this would be a bigger fight then. But George St. Pierre was also on that card. Mm -hmm one of the biggest draws in UFC history. Lesnar is one of the biggest draws in UFC history. You had Dan Henderson versus Michael Bisping. That event will be bigger than whatever the Aldo McGregor event is, most likely. But as far as just one fight, Aldo McGregor will be, will be bigger. Um, to answer your question, I don't know if it, if it gets to that point because there's not those two big you know, historic draws there. There's just you know, McGregor. I'm a, you disagree? You think it's bigger? I disagree. I think it's going to be bigger. And I think it's because, again, he already said this fight is the, the Aldo versus McGregor is already bigger than anything else that we've seen in terms of just pure one fight. If you throw even just like a Daniel Cormier or a Ronda, even, especially a Ronda Rousey, that that instantly propels that into the highest selling card in my opinion. Yeah, and Chad Mendez also comes out smelling very well as well, right? I mean, this is a guy who handled the whole situation with class afterwards. I mean, yeah. the way he spoke about McGregor and went up to him, and I mean, it, it elevated him. To be in this situation elevated him. To have that walk out, to be at that way, and I mean, he comes off looking in a loss very good as well. Now, I do think it's important to note that there are all kinds of rumors about uh, Conor McGregor's health, and he refused to address them, didn't want to. And I also think it was interesting that he really he really toned it down as far as Aldo is concerned. Like, I thought that he was going to, you know, much like Daniel Cormier and John Jones, send a message to him and call him out. He really didn't do any of that, which I thought was, was very interesting. I think it kind of showed just how emotional he was yeah. about the whole mm -hmm. situation. He yeah. really wanted to make this about him and his team. Just an amazing thing. And... I can't wait to see how it all unfolds now. Before we go, obviously, there's so much that happened here. We could do a three-hour show on this entire event, but we have to talk about Robbie Lawler versus Roy McDonald. We would be standing here kind of reacting the same way if that was the main event and yeah. there was no McGregor show here. An amazing fight. It was a fight that, man, I mean, Roy McDonald was four minutes away of becoming finally the UFC welterweight champion. It was fight of the year, of the year. And, and he loses in the fifth round because of a, a punch to the face and it just seemed like his nose just couldn't mm -hmm. take it. it. It was it was enough. What about this fight? How do you how do you put what we saw there? Because this was two guys in a phone booth going toe to toe, bloodied up, and and they just wouldn't stop. And they took more and more damage until Roy couldn't take any more. I was in awe of what we saw there. I was blown away. Again, this is this was the fight of the year. Um, there were just so many just different little moments. Like these two humans, first of all, these two humans are maybe the two most insane humans, human beings to ever That moment, I think at end of the fourth, when they yeah, just yeah. stared at each other. Yeah, Robbie Lala like spits out a yeah. giant like blood loogie and then they just stare each other down with uh, John McCarthy in between each other. Like, what's going on right yeah. now? This is, and, and I mean, it, at the end of the third, when Rory has him trapped against the fence and he's just unloading all these elbows and Robbie's just kind of, Chilling, he's just taking him. I mean, he's really hurt, but he's still firing him back. Ah, it's just, there's, it's, it's hard to really articulate it. Again, I, I keep going back to this, but it's just like that, the level of, um, the level of, I don't know, courage that it takes to be able to stick in with something like that. Like, for the for three, the last three rounds or four rounds, Rory McDonald had like a giant blood loogie just like hanging from his yeah. face. It was some, it was so visceral. Yeah, it was so it was so visceral. Like I, it's, it's and, and his incredible. coach Frazahabi tells me that he fractured his nose and his right foot. Amazing stuff out of Rory McDonald. And I kind of want to see a third fight. It's one of those weird ones where guy loses twice. I still would love to see that again, especially because he was winning the fight. You disagree? Yeah, I mean, who would not want to see that again? Okay, so you agree? I mean, I don't know if I don't know if you do it not right, right away. Not right away, but I, I'm down to see it in a couple fights. A hundred percent. I mean, I you know honestly, I would almost rather see that than Waller Hendricks three. To be honest, I I wouldn't I wouldn't mind seeing that. Well, what I, do you do with Robbie at this point? 
do you do, you do, do you give him some time off now because he's probably a little banged up and do Woodley versus Hendricks? Do you put Hendricks in there? Do you put Woodley? In? What, what do you do? Well, first you get him a really good cosmetic surgeon to fix up whatever yeah, that, that <laughs> half Joker thing was that was going on with his yeah. with his lip. Um, and then uh, Hendricks really is confident that he's getting that shot. He told me the other day that he's he's kind of sectioning off like November December okay. for his for his title shot. You know what? This this turns everything into you know I, I don't know what now. You know I I, I think both. But I think after a war like that, I think both Lawler and McDonald need a little, some time off. And I, honestly, I don't remember, I, you know, last year's fight of the year was, was Hendricks versus Lawler won. I think this is better than, I think this was better than that one. Mm-hmm. The year before that, the best fight was Jones Gustafson. I think that was, this was better than that too. Wow. I don't remember a fight. I mean, I'm sure there were, there's better fights, but man, I know that we're still very close to it. But that's, that's a, the best fight in a long time, I think, in the UFC. That was a damn, damn good fight. It's a worthy argument. I side with Jones Gustafson just because it was so shocking to see Gustafson take him down. I don't even think we need to get into all of that. Sure. Let's not take anything away from those two. It was an amazing fight, and I think, again, much like the main event, both guys come out smelling like roses. 100%. Their stock rises. So it really all started with Matt Brown and his victory. I mean, the, the, the early portion of the night, as I said, not very memorable, but then once Matt Brown finished him means in the – headlining act of the preliminary uh, card, it, it, it really started to gain some momentum. Thomas Almeida yeah. with a huge win, an unbelievable Brilliant. knockout of Brad Pickett. Gunnar Nelson coming back from the first professional loss of his career to pick up a, a, an amazing win as well on the ground like an octopus. He was, he was unbelievable on the ground and, and the punch. You're going to say Bermudez. something. I'm getting to Dennis Bermudez and Jeremy that Stevens. Th- that was an amazing performance. Uh, one somewhat marred by the fact that Jeremy Stevens missed weight. He'll probably lose some money. But again, another great performance. This is the kind of night that when people want to become MMA journalists, they dream of getting to cover these, these kinds of cards. And not just that, getting to be here to do something and cover it. And he wants to say something. But I also want to say this is why you tell people you're an MMA fan. These kinds of nights. This is the kind of tape you put in the VCR. If you still have a VCR and you show people this is what makes this sport so special. And the mainstream world that continues to ignore this sport this is what they're missing out on, and they'll never get it, and they don't need to get it, but this is what makes the sport so special. What do you want to say? Can you imagine if this is your first UFC event you've ever seen? Yeah. Like your buddy is just like, hey, come watch this Irish guy. He's pretty interesting. And you come, you come over to his house, and a bunch of these fights suck, and then all of a sudden there's six in a row, and that's what you see, and it's just like this level of violence that maybe you didn't know existed. And it's just like I don't understand what that human being who's seen this all for the first time and sees that run, that like whatever hour and a half run, what are, they, what are they thinking after that? Like, that's got to be such an incredible uh, experience. And for all the times that MMA embarrasses us as, as journalists and as fans with TRT and PEDs and alleged hit and runs and mm. rib injuries and, and just a countless list of things that, that we have to shake our head at on a daily basis, nights like this kind of make it all, it all worth it. And you kind of renew your faith in the sport Yes, I'm calling it a sport. You renew your faith in the sport after a night like this because it's, it was it was ma- it was special. It was magical. It was an, I think it was the best night in the history of the UFC tonight. Yeah, one day when Dana White is 80 years old, alongside Lorenzo Fertitta, they're sitting on some beach that they purchased. Uh, you <laughs> know, <Island>. uh, <laughs> private island. Drinking pina coladas, reminiscing on their great run as UFC owners and promoters. They're going to be talking about July 11, 2015. A very special night, a banner night for the UFC, and one in which they rolled out a new graphics package and all kinds of new things. It really felt like a special evening for the UFC. And guess what? The weekend's not over. There's more tomorrow. We're back tomorrow. It's the Ultimate Fighter finale. How about that? The fun continues here in Las Vegas. So this is the plan. We're all going to bed. You're going to have a nice Sunday evening, afternoon with your family, all that good stuff. And then we'll see you right back here in just around 24 hours time to recap the Ultimate fighter finale how about that jake ellenberger versus stephen thompson let's end this weekend on a high note unlike last year by the way when it ended with bj penn retiring that was depressing stuff hopefully that doesn't happen tomorrow for now we have to say good night from las vegas ufc 189 a night we will never forget no doubt about it conor mcgregor called his shot he predicted it he is the new ufc interim featherweight champion setting up what could very well be the biggest fight in UFC history. Good night, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in 24 hours time.